Uh, you also have a website called uh, bringatrailer.com, which is gaining a lot of ground when it comes to classic cars, and they got a really strict uh, platform there, which I really like, and it weeds away the jokesters, the tire kickers, the non-paying bidders as well. Uh, so I definitely would look into uh, Bring a Trailer. And the good thing about Bring a Trailer is, is they're going to evaluate your car and kind of come up with what they feel is the price point or the market for your car. So that's great. They do the homework for you, and they're going to come back to you and say, hey, look, this is what your car is probably going to go for. Do you want to list with us or not? They don't want to list something uh, where you're way off point. You know, because their time and space is valuable on that website. So that's a great platform. Then you have sites where you can list, like say on Hemmings.com, ClassicCars.com. There's so many sites across the board. But then you also have the outside auction platforms like Barrett Jackson, RM, Gooding, uh, Mecham. You have um, Russo and Steel. Now these are, these are places where, again, you got to do your homework. Uh, when it comes to European classic cars like the Volkswagen, I feel RM Auction and Gooding are the platforms for those cars. Uh, you take a Volkswagen to Mecham or Russo and Steel, uh, they do okay. They don't do the greatest. Uh, but you know, so you got, again, you got to do your homework of which classic car that you have is going to work on what platform. Uh, again, it's just homework and thankful, thank God we have the internet out there and you can do this research. Uh, Google is your friend, guys. So, um, and quickly, I want to go back to when it comes to taking photos of your vehicle, and you, and you don't know how to take a photo, or you don't know how to use all the, the true potential of your camera or your phone. Again, Google and YouTube are your friend, okay? Or your friends, plural. Uh, learn how to do it. Oh, I don't know how to do it. Learn. It's there. It's at our fingertips now. You don't have to go to the library anymore. You don't have to take a course anymore. The videos are there online to show you how to at least have a basic understanding, basic shots, and you know, that, that makes you all of a sudden look like a world-class photographer to some degree. You know, uh, there's, it's, it's not rocket science, it's there for you to learn. So take advantage of it. It's the best time in the world today uh, to, to learn a new skill. So, all right, let's move on. Okay, so number four, we are at honesty. So when it comes to saying, okay, you've done your research, you got your camera ready, you took your photos, they look killer, the sun was out, the car was shining, uh, please detail your car too if you're going to take photos. Don't have mud and grit and dirt on it. Make it as presentable as you can. Even if you've got to pay somebody to detail your car, do it. Because uh, it goes a long way. It shows the effort. Okay, If you've got a project, that's a different story. We're talking about finished cars here. Um, so the next thing is your honesty you got to put up your ad copy, right? So you have to describe to people the flaws, the originality to your car. You want to show your VIN numbers. You want to show dings, dents, imperfections. When you show that, that puts the buyer at ease. That means you're showing trust. I know we want to put our dealer cap on and you want to hide certain things, but nobody hates surprises when their car is shipped in and it was not noted about that imperfection that they found on a fender or the front nose. Uh, there's too many times where I see my friends are saying they're buying a car in California, shipping it to New York. They look great in the pictures, but then when they got the car, it was flurried with dings, dents, scratches, nicks, bumps, whatever. So the more you can be honest again with your car, uh, and sometimes you just got to come to grips that, you know, I don't, you know, if you have so much into a car and it's restored and the market does not bring uh, what you want for it because that's what, this is what, say you have 40, 50 grand into a restoration, but the car is only worth 25. That's your problem. That's not the buyer's problem. So, you know, you can't, I hear it constantly where people tell me, oh, I just want to get out of it what I got into it. Well, you know, what the, what the car is worth and what you have in it are two different things. Your, what you have in it is not the market. So, you know, I, you know, that's what I'm saying. You got to do your homework. This is all prior research and stuff, you know. So sometimes you got to put passions aside and think realistically. So, uh, you know, when you're ad doing your ad copy, I'm not saying to write a book. I'm not saying to, you know, it's spill every little minuscule detail, but it does help. And you want to break up your ad copy. You don't want a huge long paragraph. Uh, and there's no breaks in the, in the paragraphs and, you know, go a few lines and break, do a space because it's good, it's easier on the eyes. When I go to an ad and I see a huge solid brick wall 
of text, and sometimes it's all in capital letters. Oh my God, I'm just going back, and I'm getting off the ad. I mean, it's you have to break it up. When it's all in caps, it looks like you're yelling. It just looks ridiculous. So once you write up your ad copy, give yourself some breaks, do some bullet points, and, and note all the positive aspects of the car. Note the negative aspects of the car. Undercarriage shots are always crucial, especially for Volkswagens. You know, people want to see the undercarriage. If you can get it up on a lift, that's, that's great. If you can jack it up and put it up on jack stands and somehow lie down on the ground, and you don't even really have to lie down on the ground anymore. You can just squat down, point that camera up or your phone, take the shot, review the shot, because you can review shots today. It's not like you have to go to a one-hour photo and get them developed anymore, right? So you review the shot and you see, did I take a good picture? If not, erase it, try it again. So some people will say, I got a bad back, I can't get down on the ground. You don't have to get down on the ground. If you can't get down on the ground, then you grab your, your son, you grab your grandchild, you grab, you grab your niece or nephew and tell them, take the shot because I need to show these details. Uh, it's just, again, we live in a world today where the, you know, there's a solution to everything. So uh, when someone tells me they can't get underneath or they don't have time to do that, then that just you know, turns me off as a buyer. You know, I want to be able to hear that person say, yep, I'm going to get you those pictures tonight or I'll be at the end of the week. I can't get to it today. Whatever it is, show the effort. Uh, you have to do that to sell successfully and to get your price. So honesty, it goes a long way. And again, description, description, description. Do it nice and proofread it for crying out loud. How many times I see typos in run-on sentences. I feel like an English teacher and I'm looking at these things. These people are just going and going and going. And it's just like, do you know how to spell? Do you know how to write? If you don't know how to write or spell, then you freaking Fiverr.com will write it for you for five bucks. You hire someone for five dollars to write it for you. I don't, you know, there's there's so many solutions today. So I don't mean to sound uh, mean or, or temperamental or anything like that, but it's just I've been doing this for long enough time where I see it over and over and over again, and it's just amazing what you know. The easy fixes could turn your ad into something special. So, okay, and number five, uh, and I quickly briefed on it before, is timing. Uh, timing your your ad, timing your auction. Your if you're listing on Craigslist or the Samba or some site where there's no crucial element when it comes to timing, um, you know it, that's a little different. But when it comes to an auction, like say eBay or Bring a Trailer, um, you don't want to really list an auction around Super Bowl Sunday or the holidays. Um, you know, anything that any time a holiday falls or uh, the time of year, even per se, like before Thanksgiving or something like that. Or I really noticed that after once school starts in September in this in the Northeast area, it starts to dip a little bit. People are not um, really focusing on buying a classic car at this point in this region because even in any region across the country because school has just started and a lot of times parents are just not interested in looking at that they're getting the kids set up for school and they're buying them clothes and stuff and so but I do notice sometimes around the holidays it does pick up a little bit a, a husband or a wife might want to buy a car for their spouse or loved one um, but then I usually see it pick up again after the holidays around January February uh, because they're looking towards the spring and they want to pick something up prior. Uh, so timing your auctions. Again, I told you about eBay. Sunday nights are good. Uh, bring a trailer. I don't know if you can time it there. They kind of set that up, I believe. Don't, don't quote me on that one, but uh, just look into that and see uh, when, they, uh, when they close, start the auctions and close them. So I, I get emails every day on bring a trailer. So, um, And then when it just comes down to, yeah, I mean... It, the, the, the night when you end the auction, again, you don't want a Friday morning. Nobody's really looking. I mean, I don't know. It's great time to buy. You know, a lot of those, a lot of those sites, you know, if you can catch them on a, you know, a Thursday morning, Friday morning, sometimes a Friday night, and an auction's ending on a Friday night, and you can steal that car, that's a good way to buy. Um, but, yeah, it, it all comes down to the timing, and you got to see the time of year as well. Uh, I, I know this is an, an international thing now, so different seasons and different times. You know, Florida doesn't really have any you know, bad weather, so you can't really think uh, that it's not a good time to, to sell in the winter. So, uh, but that is basically it, guys. I know that was a wordy presentation, and I had five things there uh, uh, that could help you sell your classic car or vintage Volkswagen on the Internet. Um, and I've, I've gone through this once before, but it's just... 
I, th I feel like I had to say this because it's just amazing. I still see ads very, very primitive still. There's no thought thrown into these ads at all. And if you, one of the things I, I do want to point out, say this is a, a bonus. And part of my French, but don't be a penis. Don't be a dick when you're adding, when you're, when you're doing your ad or when you're setting this up. I still see guys with mega exclamation points saying, no tire kickers, don't waste my time terminology like that right then and there I don't want to deal with you because you are on the internet and I don't care if you put that up or not you're still going to get people that are going to waste your time you're still going to get people that are going to tire kick so you know when you set yourself up that way you set yourself up as an angry person and you're setting yourself up that you know it's got a very short fuse and that is not good selling um, you got to be open you're dealing with the globe now because this is the internet right and you're going to have people that are interested, interested parties, and everybody's temperament, temperament is different. And if you come off that way, you come off harsh, I don't want to deal with that. I mean, that's just my two cents. Um, you know, maybe it works for some people, but, you know, I, you can't be that way, you know. So that's just my two cents. But anyways, um, if anybody wants to add anything else to this video, please leave it in the description below or in the comments below, and I'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, that's it, guys. Okay, Chris from ClassicVWBugs.com. Pop me an email. It's off my website. Visit my website, www.ClassicVWBugs.com. And take care. Happy selling. Um.